Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on organic synthesis. So this is topic 36 for the CIE specification. So this is the Cambridge Internationals. So if you're studying the um, Internationals, uh, the Cambridge Internationals um, specification, then you're in exactly the right place. And obviously in this video, we are going to look at topic 36 in obviously just for this video, but I do have a full range of videos from topic one all the way to 37 for which covers the full A level for CIE on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. All I ask is you hit the subscribe button just to show your support for um, for the channel. That'll be absolutely um, brilliant and amazing. Um, also, these are PowerPoint slides that I've created and they are available to purchase in the test shop. The link is in the description box below. They're great for your revision to supplement your notes, etc. Um, if you, um, obviously you can print them out, put them in your file, add notes to them, etc. So you've kind of got ready made notes, um, for this, um, specification. All right. So let's make a start then. Um, now what you'll find, um, with, um, this topic is it, uh, the whole point of this is to kind of summarize your current, um, you know, your current kind of organic knowledge, your organic chemistry knowledge. Um, so you'll find there's a lot of overlap here with year one and obviously it's got the new stuff for year two as well. Now I've deliberately done that so you can get a whole overview of the full A level for organic chemistry and their reactions in one place. I've obviously also added in the specific year two um, additional equations that you need to know the reactions involved with that and we're going to do a little bit of retro synthesis at the end it sounds quite um, <laughs> and sounds quite um, like hip and fancy um, but it's not <laughs> well it is it's all right so you've got a uh, retro synthesis is basically where you're um, you, you try and work out what your starting product is uh, your starting reactant is from a particular product so you're trying to work out the kind of organic pathway effect with the steps i'll go through it anyway hopefully it should uh, it should make itself a little bit clearer so really this is a nice summary of everything you should know really for organic chemistry and the reactions involved with it so you need to know let's go through some functional groups first again you will have seen these from year one and year two and you might be sick of me talking about these but it's a nice summary of all of these so i'll quickly whiz through these so you need to know about alkanes um obviously they have the ending of ane such as propane Alkenes have that double bond, like propene, for example. Um, alcohols and diols, obviously they have an OH group, and normally they end in ol. Um, sometimes it might be hydroxy, it depends on the type of chemical that we're looking at. Arenes obviously have the benzene, um, the benzene ring with a group attached to it, so it might be an alkyl group, for example. Phenols um, have the OH group attached to it, so obviously that's... Um, um, normally it ends in phenol at the end, so for example, for methyl phenol. Um, haloalkanes obviously have the CX or the C halogen group, so this could be fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo, for example, like bromo propane. Uh, you've also got ethers as well, which have an oxygen in the middle. They're normally um, used alkoxy, so it might be methoxy methane, for example. Um, primary amines and diamines, obviously, this is. Um, NH2 um, for primary amines, so um, it might be amino or it might end in amine, for example, for example, amino acids or um, or diamino propane or something like that, or methyl amine, you might have something like that as well. So, there's just a few examples. You've also got obviously your secondary, tertiary, and quaternary amines as well that you need to be aware of. <coughs> Excuse me. Amides, um, obviously you've got this carboxylic acid, uh, looks like a carboxylic acid. Um, you've got a carbonyl group here with an NH2, and then it's an amide, for example, ethanamide or ethanamide. Um, aldehydes, these obviously have your carbonyl group just with the H, the end in al, so for example, something like ethanol. Carboxylic acids and dicarboxylic acids, so you have your carboxylic acid group, as you can see there. Um, and obviously this ends in oic acid, so it might be methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, something like that. 
esters um, these are obviously derivatives of carboxylic acids so you have your carbonyl group with the r group here so they end in o8 so it might be methyl ethanoate for example acid chlorides or acyl chlorides as they're also known um, these end in oil chloride as you can see there so for example methanol chloride ketones um, these are obviously formed from secondary alcohols so they end in own and have the they're always in the middle so this functional group is always in the middle of a carbon chain so for example propanone um, nitriles obviously this is cn so c triple bond n is a nitrile so it normally ends in nitrile like ethane nitrile for example right so let's see we've got our various functional groups there let's see if we can spot some functional groups and you might have seen this in a previous video but i'm going to bring it up again so what i'm going to ask you to do is i'm going to bring up some really bizarre chemicals that you may have never seen before and that doesn't matter at all all i'm going to ask you to do is try and spot the functional group so at this point if you want to kind of play along you can pause the video um try and work out where the functional groups are and then obviously unpause it and then you'll be able to obviously find out what the answer is. So paracetamol is the first one. We know what that is. Um, so where are your functional groups? Pause it now if you want to work it out. Okay, so your functional groups are phenol, which is there. And you've also got this here as well, which is your amide group. So you've got two in this one. Okay, let's do adrenaline then, which is what you get before you go into an exam. Um, so pause the video if you want to try and work them out yourself. Okay, so this is going to be um, this one, which is of your phenol, which is this chemical here. We also have an alcohol group, which is over there. And finally, we have our amine group, which is right at the end there. Right, how about this one? So ethyl cyanoacrylate. This is basically the active ingredient in superglue. So pause the video if you want to work out where they are for yourself. Okay, so the first one is a nitrile, which is right at the end there. Well done if you've got this one as well in blue. So this is an alkenyl, so basically an alkenyl. So basically this is a just a double bond, an alkene. You also have this, which is an ester, okay, which is nice and handy. So these are, what, what you need to really do is look at a molecule, okay, and being able to spot a functional group. And the key thing here is it's not worrying about what the molecule is. They'll probably give you a molecule you've never seen before at all, ever, okay? And they'll probably talk about some fancy chemical that's found in paint or found in, I don't know, chocolate or something like that. It doesn't really matter what it is. What you need to be thinking of is, right, what are my functional groups in here? What do I know about the chemistry of these functional groups and what reactions they do? That's what's more important. Don't be distracted by the chemical they give you. It's irrelevant. It's mainly about, um, you know, it's mainly about the kind of reactions that happens with the functional groups. And this is why this kind of little exercise here is important because I've given you deliberately three chemicals, which you might have heard of before, but you've probably never seen the formula of. And it's not about the formula, it's about the functional groups. So we need to know about some reaction reaction types as well um now the seven main groups of reaction that we need to be aware of again you would have seen these in year one it's just really a summary so i'll whiz through these so you've got your addition reactions and this is where a double bond is broken um, and two molecules are joined to form a single product so it could be an alkene it could be a ketone it could be a aldehyde as you can see on there um, substitution this is where we swap one functional group for another classic example is obviously benzene where you've got hydrogen substituted you've got a halogen and you've got a oh for example can be substituted elimination dehydration so this is where a double bond is normally formed of these types of reactions um, and it's released obviously as part of a smaller molecule so normally you might get water eliminated you might get hx so h like a hydrogen halide eliminated so um functional groups normally involved are halogens and hydroxide ions so hydroxy ions so oh condensation reactions this is when you get two molecules that will join and a small molecule is released normally water but it can be hydrogen halides as well so normally the functional groups involved in here are acid chlorides and um, carboxylic acids you might get amides and um, alcohols as well 
Hydrolysis, this is where obviously we've got two smaller molecules are formed by splitting larger ones with water, so hydrolysis. Um, so hydro and water, lysis being into split. Um, so classic examples are esters. Um, so for example, here you might have um, ethers as well. So you know, other, other molecules here, polymers basically. So polymers, you'll probably see this quite a lot. Uh, proteins, um, you know, bigger, bigger molecules like that. Oxidation, um, normally this is where you, obviously oxidation is the um, loss of electrons um, or you can gain in oxygen, but the one that you really need to be focusing on is the electron side, so the loss of electrons. So oxidation of a primary alcohol, for example, to form an aldehyde and a keto, uh, aldehyde and a, a carboxylic acid. Um, you can take a secondary alcohol and react it to, or oxidize it to form a ketone, as you can see here. Um, reduction is just the opposite of oxidation. So this is, reduction is the gain of electrons. Um, so this is basically, say, a carboxylic acid going down to an aldehyde, going down to a primary alcohol, or it could be a ketone going down to a secondary alcohol, as you can see there. Right, so... A lot of this, a lot of organic synthesis um, of this topic is really knowing about the reaction pathways. You need to know reagents, you need to know um, you know, the products that's produced, what reactants are used, etc. This is not something you're going to look at in this video and say, right, I know every single reaction and all the reagents. If you do, you're superhuman, and I don't believe there's anybody out there can do it. Okay, straight, straight as that. Okay, so don't want to look at this and think, how on earth am I going to remember all this? Okay, a lot of this is just summarizing what you've seen already. Okay, there's nothing new here. Everything is all summarized. The key thing with organic synthesis is just learning as you go along. So over a long period of time, consolidate all the different reactions that you've got and try and kind of make use of it. Now, the best way, if I'm honest, of, and I keep saying this as well, the best way of learning all of this is just to practice, 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 okay? It's a bit like cooking, um, you know, you, you only get better at cooking by keep doing it, keep making it, keep trying it, keep changing things and seeing how it works. So, like with anything, it doesn't happen overnight, okay? So, don't people sitting here thinking, do I, you know, some people will know all this off by hand. It it's just, just doesn't happen, okay? So, this is just a nice summary, okay? It summarizes all of the reactions, and it's split for year two. It's split into two different categories. You've got aliphatics, which is just your straight, your basically chain reaction, uh, your chain um, mechanisms. So, for example, these are going to be ones where you don't have a uh, benzene ring involved. Then you've got aromatics, which have a benzene ring in. So, we're going to look at the aliphatics first, and then move on to aromatics. Some of these reactions will be year one that you've seen in year one. Some will just purely be for year two. Okay, so basically try to summarize as many of the reactions as I can um, into um, a few slides here. Okay, so I think the best thing to do here and see if you can try and do it. So let's kind of practice start as we mean to go on. And don't worry if you're not going to get all these right. Um, you know, even if you get 10% right at the start or even 5%. Right, um, you know, you kind of keep on going through this, and you keep on building it up, and that that kind of you remembering these reactions will go to ten percent, then fifteen, then twenty, and eventually you'll build it up over time. You'll remember more and more and more of these, and they'll become second nature. But to kind of make a start, I've put some of the reagents on here, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an arrow uh, on here, and what I want you to try and do is work out what the reaction conditions are for going from one species to another that pops up on here. Now, if you wish, you can pause the video when the arrow comes up, um, see if you can work it out, unpause the video, and then see if you've got it right, okay? And then keep on doing this until you get as many of these as you can. The more of these you know, the more marks you'll pick up. I know that sounds obvious, but it's true, okay? It's a big part of organic chemistry. So, let's try this one first. So, alcohol to aldehyde. Now, if you want to pause the video, pause it now. Okay, so the product produced is potassium dichromate, or some of the reactant, sorry, is potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid, heat with a primary alcohol, and a distillation kit. Okay, so what about aldehyde to alcohol? Okay, so this is going to be sodium borohydride in methanol and water. What about aldehyde to carboxylic acid? 
Okay, so this is going to be potassium dichromate, sulfuric acid, and it's all done under reflux. So that's obviously oxidation. Uh, alcohol to ketone. Okay, this is exactly the same. Again, it's just an oxidation reaction. Um, so we heat secondary alcohol this time in a reflux kit. What about ketone going to an alcohol? Okay, so this is a reduction reaction. So we're going to use a reducing agent, sodium borohydride in methanol and water. What about alcohol to alkene? Okay, so this is obviously a, an elimination reaction. So you're using sulfuric acid or you can use phosphoric acid and a bit of heat and you'll obviously remove your water. So condensation reactions, you remove water from it. Okay, what about an alkene to an alcohol? Okay, they're using steam here. Obviously, we need to add water back to it. Phosphoric acid catalyst, 60 atmospheres of pressure and 300 degrees Celsius. Okay, what about alcohol to haloalkane? Okay, so this is going to be sodium halide um, and you're going to be, obviously have sulfuric acid in there and it's all done at 20 degrees Celsius. What about haloalkane or halogenoalkane to alcohol? Okay, so you're going to use warm sodium hydroxide for this um, for this reaction, bit of water and get it all done under reflux. You'll find reflux is used a lot here. Um, alkane to halogenoalkane or haloalkane. Okay, so this is going to be um, UV light and using a halogen. Remember, alkanes are really unreactive, so you have to form radicals with this one. That's your radical reactions to get this going. Okay, so what about an alkene going to a haloalkane? Okay, so this is going to be HX, so hydrogen halide, and a 20 degrees Celsius. So basically, you're adding this to the double bond of the alkene. And what about the haloalkane going to an alkene, so going backwards? Okay, so this is going to be potassium hydroxide and ethanol, and it's all going to be done under reflux. So we're eliminating it. It's an elimination reaction. What about an alkene to a dihaloalkane? Well, this one, you're adding a halogen. So here, I'd say X2, for example, and 20 degrees Celsius. So that was the um, decolorization of bromine water, for example. So you add Br2 and you'll form dihaloalkane or dibromoalkane. Okay, what about alkene to a diol? Okay, so this is acidified potassium manganate solution and it's going to be at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what about alkene to alkane? Okay, here you're just adding hydrogen. So it's just hydrogenation reaction. Um, so adding to that double bond, nickel catalyst and 150 degrees Celsius. Okay, what about alcohol to iodoalkane? So this one using iodine, using some red phosphorus as well, and reflux. Remember, there's only specific reactions, specific chemicals that will actually undergo that one. So that was in year one chemistry. Okay, what about carboxylic acid to alcohol? Okay, so this is going to be lithium aluminium hydride, um, a primary alcohol, of course. If you're going from carboxylic acid, that's all you can have. Um, so obviously, it only forms your primary one there. Okay, let's have a look at a few more. Okay, some of these are from the previous slides. Some of them are fairly new. So let's have a look. Haloalkane to nitrile. Okay, so this is going to be potassium cyanide, ethanol, and reflux. What about nitrile to primary amine? Okay, so here we're using lithium aluminium hydride, so it's a reduction reaction um, and dilute sulfuric acid, or we can just purely add hydrogen, nickel platinum catalyst, high temperature and pressure, or we can use sodium, ethanol, and reflux as well. So what we're trying to do is basically add hydrogen to the nitrile to form the primary amine. Okay, what about haloalkane to primary amine? Okay, so this one using ammonia and heat. Remember, this is excess ammonia, so you need another mechanism for that. We've got two molecules of ammonia, one acting as a nucleophile initially, and then it's acting as a base for the second molecule of ammonia. So you would have seen the mechanism for that. 
we would have seen all of these, in fact, but just kind of jogging your memory. Okay, nitrile to carboxylic acid. Okay, so this is going to be dilute hydrochloric acid, and it's all done under reflux. What about haloalkane to carboxylic acid? Okay, so this is using magnesium. We're using a dry ether, carbon dioxide in dilute acid to do that. What about aldehyde or ketone to form a hydroxy nitrile? Okay, here we're going to use potassium cyanide and sulfuric acid, and it's going to be done at 20 degrees Celsius. Um, you can use hydrogen cyanide as well, but potassium cyanide is just easier to handle. Um, acyl chlorides or acid chlorides to carboxylic acids. Okay, so this is going to be water and um, 20 degrees Celsius, an incredibly vigorous reaction. Anything with acyl chlorides is going to be a, a vigorous reaction. Um, carboxylic acids to form an acyl chloride. And that's going to be SOCl2. Nice and straightforward. Um, aldehyde to ester. Okay, well, this one's going to be concentrated sulfuric acid, bit of alcohol, and heat and a catalyst. Okay, so that's how you're going to form that. What about ester to carboxylic acid? Okay, well, this one is dilute sulfuric acid. Um, H2O, reflux, and a catalyst, or we can use dilute sodium hydroxide and reflux as well. So this is um, hydrolysis. We're splitting the ester to form a carboxylic acid. And this one, <laughs> then to give it away, and alcohol as well. Okay, so obviously um, when you hydrolyze an ester, you form carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So you've got two for the price of one for that one. Okay, what about alcohol to ester? Okay, so this one obviously you react with a carboxylic acid and an acid catalyst. And you can use an acyl chloride as well. So acid chloride with an alcohol will also form um, an ester too. Okay, what about acyl chlorides to primary amide? Primary amide? Okay, again, another vigorous reaction. You react it with ammonia and it's done at 20 degrees Celsius. So they're all your aliphatics. So there's, you know, if you can get your head around that, if you can remember um, over time, remember. Um, so if you remember a good chunk of these, you're on a good stead to get decent marks in your exam because this basically summarizes a good chunk of the A-level syllabus, which is organic chemistry. So yeah, nice way to kind of, you know, summarize all these different reactions because you see so many of them. It's nice to see how they kind of interlink and kind of react with each other. Okay, so let's have a look at some aromatics then first. Um, obviously, aromatics contain the benzene ring. Um, so let's have a look at some of these reactions. Again, we'll do the same. Um, actually, we can't do the same because I've actually included them here. So um, I'm just going to go through these um, with all the different reagents on here. So benzene to halo benzene. Um, is halogenation okay so remember you're adding a halogen to the benzene with an acid um, with a halogen carrier sorry benzene's really unreactive so you need a nice punchy um, positive charge okay so this is an electrophile um, for to add anything onto benzene so halogen carriers are used quite a lot to create that um, same with alkylation as well so alkyl benzene we use a halogen catalyst it's under reflux and we use a halo alkane to add that on it as well. Okay, still looking at benzene. So here we're going to look at nitration. So here we add concentrated sulfuric acid. Nitric acid has got to be done under 55 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, you'll get multiple nitrations. That might not be what you want. Um, and this can react further to form amino benzene. So this is a reduction reaction. Um, so concentrated hydro hydrochloric acid, tin and reflux, or we can add sodium hydroxide as well. Okay, so acylation, um, this is a phenyl ketone. Um, so RCOCl, um, so you've got your, obviously your um, acid chloride, which is that, with an, a halogen carrier, the catalyst, and that will form your phenyl ketone. So this is your... Um, Friedel Crafts acylation, remember. 
Okay, let's have a look at some reactions with phenol. Um, so phenol, um, to form the salt, sodium phenoxide, um, we need sodium hydroxide. So remember, phenol here would be acting as an acid. So it's acid plus base will form the salt, which is sodium phenoxide. Um, phenol reacting with an acyl chloride. Again, it acts as an acid, so um, it will form a phenyl ester. Well, it acts as like an alcohol, should I say. So alcohol plus um, acyl chloride will form an ester. In this case, it's just phenyl ester. And obviously multiple bromination. So this, um, obviously adding bromine water to a phenol will form 246-tribromophenol, as you can see on there. So we're just adding bromine to it. Um, looking at am amino benzenes as well. So we can form benzene diazonium chloride. So remember this was the, um, helps to the manufacture of azo dyes. So here we add, um, uh, HNO2 and hydrochloric acid. Remember, all that's going to be made in situ as well um, because HNO2 is not very stable. And then we can react that further with the phenol that we've just obviously looked at before to make your full azo compound and you form your azide link, which is the bit in the middle here. Okay, so that's your form your azo, azo dye. Okay, so... All the steps, all of these steps here, there's loads of different reactions there. So just take your time with it. You need to do it. Like I say, can't emphasize this enough. Do it over a period of time. You shouldn't be looking at this and thinking, I need to know all this. And you, you're not expecting you to watch this video. And then at the end of it, say, right, I could rattle off all of them equations. It should be done over time. This is just a summary. Okay. So all the steps here, um, we can use these to make a target molecule. And obviously, all of this is important for chemists. Chemists will want to try and produce something, okay? So they might have found a, a, a drug, they might have found a material, they might have found um, a chemical that they wish to make. Now, all of these, um, you know, for example, if you're making a medicine as a classic example, you might have made a, a lab-scale drug, and that drug may be effective at doing what it needs to do. It's found to be effective, so that's fine. But when you're making a drug, you've got to make them en masse, particularly if you are... Um, you know, particularly if you're delivering this drug to a wide market of people, okay? So organic synthesis or synthesizing something means to make, and the vast majority of drugs are organic chemistry-based. In fact, nearly everything is, if I'm honest, okay? Because something will have carbon and hydrogen in there. So it's really important for chemists. When they've got a target molecule, they need to work out, well, how do I actually make that, first of all? That's the first thing. And then the second thing is, how do we scale that up on an industrial scale and get all the manufacturing in place and make it at a reasonable price? Because if it's too expensive, people won't buy it or you know, health boards won't buy it, for example. So it's critical. This kind of synthetic step takes time. And this is why it takes years and years to develop drugs because of the, the mechanics of it and the synthesis of it. Um, is quite important. So they use, chemists use something called retrosynthesis, which is where they start with the molecule they want to make and they work backwards and they say, right, well, what ingredients do I need to do to make that? So um, so we use a target product and sometimes we'll use this double arrow, um, this kind of kind of double lined arrow to show a retrosynthetic step. It's just you using it backwards. The reason why I'm talking about this in CIE is because I think it's a really good way of trying to get you to think about what's what's used to make that in the first place. So the first thing we do is we start with the molecule we want to produce and what I would do here is identify the functional groups in that molecule. So see right what functional groups do we have what things or what other chemicals do I think I might need to make them functional groups? So this is where you're kind of tapping into your kind of um, your synthetic roots knowledge here. So once we've got the functional groups and we've identified them, we then need to work out the retrosynthetic step to establish the molecules that are needed to make it in the first place. So we need to work backwards. So when we look at these molecules and work out any molecules that are required to make these and so on, and we keep working backwards until we get to a chemical that is a raw material, something that's made through bulk chemistry. So it might be an acid. It could be phenols, for example. It could be benzene, something that's found from a raw material or is, is a bulk chemical. So I'm going to use a, an analogy here of, of um, baking. 
Okay, so if you've got a product, we know what you want to make. When you make something, you say, right, I want to make this. Okay, you know what you're going to make. And then you've got to then try and work out. Imagine you had no recipe book at all. Okay, so you didn't have anything at all. You've got to then work out, okay, what ingredients do I think I might need to make this final product? So here, we're going to look at how you make a Bakewell tart. Now, you can probably look at that and think, okay, I might have a good guess about what I might need and what process I might need to do. So you can see here you've got almonds, you've got icing sugar, so you probably need water in there as well. Um, you've got a pastry there, so you probably need flour, you'll need butter in there, you'll probably need eggs. Um, you, you know, you've got, you've got multiple different ingredients there. And then you've got to try and work out a way in which, okay, how can I go backwards? What do I do? Now I'm going to break this down in a simple, obviously a simple form. The Bakewell tart is made of multiple different steps. So the retro kind of synthesis of this Bakewell tart will be pastry and the filling bit. Okay, so we know that we've got the pastry case and the filling to go in the middle. So that's fine, but we can't just buy filling from a supermarket. And okay, you could buy pastry, but you can make pastry as well. So we need to kind of go back a bit further and say, right, well, how do you make the pastry and how do you make the filling? So if we go back again, these are your starting ingredients and we have loads of different starting ingredients and we mix some together, we bake some and we um, bake some for a particular time, some for longer, some for less time. Some you don't even bake at all, like icing sugar, you don't need to bake that. So it's the same with chemistry. So you're looking at your kind of your raw ingredients and it's about how do you put them together to make an intermediate, like a middle product, i.e. pastry and the filling, and then how do you use them intermediates to then produce the final product put it together and get something which is useful okay so moving away from um obviously moving away from bacon let's have a look at a a, a retro synthesis for the manufacturing of a particular chemical so we need to work out what is needed to make chemical a via retro synthesis given that ethanoic anhydride okay which is um, this chemical here is used in the first retro synthesis step and they react in the same way as acyl chlorides now they're giving you a bit of a, a funny chemical here but you need to think okay acyl chlorides it's the similar type of reaction so you need to get your head switched on about acid chloride reactions okay so here's chemical A. so what i want to do is look at the functional groups involved Okay, so we know that the COCH3 bit comes from the anhydride bit. We've been told that. Okay, so they work out in the in a similar way. So we know that's that's been given already. Okay, so acid anhydrides, they react in the same way as acyl chlorides. Okay, and so from this information, we know that amines, which is RNH2, can react with acid anhydrides to form chemical A. Okay, so this could be, for example, an acyl chloride. You could have a Cl on the end of this, and that could obviously react to form that. So we can start with amino benzene. So there's amino benzene there. So we can react that with, let's say, an acid chloride, which reacts in the same way as an acid anhydride. And this is your anhydride there. Um, and this is one of our starting materials. Now, you could use an acid chloride here. It doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to do is to say, look, this reacts in a similar way. This is an anhydride here. It might give you a chemical here. Um, and it reacts in a similar way, except you'd have just Cl on the bottom here. And that can react with this, which is NH2, your amino benzene. Okay. So we need to then say, right, well, how do we make amino benzene? Okay, so we can't just get a bottle of amino benzene. It doesn't really exist naturally. So we can go backwards even further. So at this point, um, obviously amino benzene is made from a nitro group, which is NO2. And the nitro group is reduced to form the amine group, which is NH2. Um, and the reagents and conditions are concentrated hydrochloric acid, tin metal and reflux. And then we add some sodium hydroxide to it as well. So, um, and this reaction may be provided with this on the data sheet. It depends on obviously what the, what the, what the example gives you. Um, just be prepared though. You should make sure you try and remember these. Okay, that's the best bet is to just kind of cover your back. Okay, so um, nitrobenzene, there it is there. So you've got NH2 and we're going to go right back to nitrobenzene. Okay, and then how do we make nitrobenzene? 
So, um, nitrobenzene is made from benzene, okay, and that is a raw material. Um, now, the reagents to make nitrobenzene from benzene is used concentrated nitric acid and sulfuric acid, um, and you obviously undergo a nitration reaction. So there it is there. And so that's our other starting reagent. So benzene is a really good starting point for a lot of reactions. Because with benzene, you can form nitrobenzene. You can form um, a phenyl, um, so you can form phenylamine, for example, and then um, or amino benzene, should I say. So you can form amino benzene, and then you can then add, react amino benzene, which is basically just an amine, um, with say an acid chloride and that will form obviously your product or in this case you can use an anhydride as well okay so what we're trying to do is kind of work backwards but your kind of raw materials are things like alkanes alkenes benzene rings things like this and you can kind of build up a multi-step reaction to actually get the um, to actually get it to work so hopefully hopefully that's that helps but like i say with any of this do it over time okay you're not what i'm not expecting to do is to look at this and think oh i should know all this it just isn't going to happen okay so um you know over time and build it up over time really important so that's the end of this um video then on topic 36 for organic synthesis like I say um this is just one of 37 topics that make up the full cie specification they are available on allery chemistry youtube channel Please hit the subscribe button just to show your support for this project. That would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, also, these slides, along with other slides as well, are bundled together to form the year one and year two content, are available to purchase from the test shop. Click on the link in the description box below, and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. Like I say, you can print them off and make notes all over them. It kind of just helps you to concentrate on your revision rather than writing out loads of notes. Um, so that's it then. Hope that helps. Bye-bye.